Okay, so in this video, we will look at two examples of B-series. And in each case, we will ask quite simply, does the series converge or diverge? And now that we have a complete knowledge of B-series, then this will be very short. So the first thing that's annoying here is that we don't seem to have just 1 over n to a power. We have the cube root of n. So the first step we can do is we can rewrite the cube root as, of course, n to the power of 1 over 3. But we look at a generic p-series as summing from 1 to infinity. Of course, we could start summing at any other point. That doesn't matter. We could start summing at 10. The result would still apply. But we, ha we are summing 1 over n to the p. There's a, an annoying 2 here, but as it is a constant multiple with respect to n, we can just factor it outside the series. So this is simply 2 times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 over 3. And now we clearly have our generic p series. p is 1 over 3. And this is not larger than 1, right? This is less than or equal to 1. But a p-series can only converge if p is strictly larger than 1. As this is not the case, this series diverges. And we're done. Let's look at our second and last example. What if we try to sum, let's say from 4 to infinity, root of n over n squared. And again, here we start summing at 4, but if you remember, this is irrelevant, right? When you look at a series and you try and determine whether it converges or diverges, you can always ignore the first few terms. You can ignore the first 10 terms, the first 500 terms, it doesn't matter, as a finite sum of real numbers is always finite. So every result about any convergent or divergent series will not be affected by the starting point. So this is still, hopefully, will be a p-series. Well, let's rewrite root of n as n to the 1 half. And now here we can cancel our exponents and combine as a single power of n. When you divide the same base, you can subtract the exponents. So you'll have here, we want to keep our n in the denominator, this will be n to the 2 minus 1 half, but 2 is 4 over 2, minus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. And now we are summing from 4 to infinity, 1 over n to the 3 half, clearly a p-series, p is now 3 over 2, which is strictly larger than 1. So this series converges. Oops. And you don't need to write in either case by the p-series test as when you write p equals something and you compare it to 1, either less than or equal to 1 or larger than 1, this is clear that you are making use of the p-series test. And that's it.